One thing all of us racers have in common, we all want to be faster. It doesn't really matter what you drive, we're all limited by the same rules. The question is, do you know what those rules are? iRacing Faster is a regular series of videos that'll show you my training routines so we can learn to be faster together. If you're interested in following this series, you'll find all of the videos on my YouTube channel. See you on the track. So welcome back to Summit Point. Here we are in another fast lap, aiming for around about a 124.8, 124.9, which is about the typical lap speed that uh, qualifying lap speed that I can do at the moment. Heading down the start finish straight and over the line. Now, as we go through this particular uh, exercise, don't worry so much about the line that we're taking through the corners, but be very aware of the gear and also the minimum speed. So as we take turn one, we're looking at about 46 miles per hour was the minimum speed through that corner and it was a second gear corner. Heading over to turn two. And that's about 84 miles an hour. And as we approach the next corner, we want a nice wide entry coming off the gas very slightly. Straightening the steering for the, um, for the braking zone. And if you watch, the minimum speed is almost 42 miles per hour. So wide entry, again the speed is dropping 47 miles per hour. Staying on the gas as far as we can. Ideally, um, certainly on the uh, older tyre models, you could do this whole section without lifting. Slight lift there as we come through towards onto the, uh, the final corner for the lap. So long straight here, good exit speed, very important. Braking early. 82 miles per hour. One minute, 24.857. So we're going to talk a little bit about eye speed. Now, the first thing to set when you go in there is the same series that you're currently racing at and also the same week that you're currently racing. That's just to balance up the weather, the weather settings and wind settings and to make sure that you get a lap which are, is as representative as possible from the database that um, iSpeed contains. So choose somebody, preferably on a qualifying lap so that you know it's a pure lap, who is generally around about um, a second away from where you are and you'll be presented with first of all a track map underneath you can see um, his gear choices and when I tick this button here you can actually see mine overlaid on his so mine are in blue his are red and if the first thing that I always do is I go through and compare whereabouts or, or not necessarily where but what gear we're using for the entire track so the big difference that we can see here was when I dropped into second gear in that um, tight uh, left hand corner other than that the gear changes are pretty much exactly the same next thing I would do was use the time delta and that will show me um, across the course of a whole lap where he gained time on me or where I gained time on him. So in this particular case, um, he's gained 0 0.089 seconds across the first half of the lap and then has suddenly gained 0 0.46 seconds in that very small section of the lap. So it would make sense that rather than just go round and round that we try and do everything the same on a lap, and try and work out what it is that he is doing differently in this section. So just to uh, bring up the colour options that you can see on screen here, um, I've matched both drivers with the same colour. I use dark red when there's hard braking, uh, light red when there is light braking, coasting is a light blue colour, partial throttle is a dark green, full throttle is a light green, and then the actual colour of driver 1 is, uh, is displayed in uh, red. All 
Okay, so if we zoom into the track map, you can actually see the line that he took. And then I'm selecting and deselecting my line so that you can see that coming into this particular corner, we both took a very different line. So mine was tight and he's taken a far more um, in to out flowing into the corner, which is a much more traditional way that you would take a corner like that. You can also see from where we start breaking that I'm actually breaking earlier than him. And across the length of the breaking, I'm actually breaking longer than him. So that seems unusual that you would break both, both earlier and longer. So there's something going on there with the way that I'm breaking for that corner. If we go into the second phase of the corner, you can see that my tight line means that I'm then sweeping way out on the exit and his line means that he's taking a far tighter line into that exit. As we move into the third section, so we're now looking towards the right-hander, the lines aren't too different. I've managed to pretty much compensate from where I, where I was out of position and get myself back into position. And you can see that the dark red breaking points are pretty much the same. However, the big difference here is in this coasting phase. So whereas um, I am coasting for quite a distance round that corner or into the start of that corner, you can see that when you compare it to his, he's breaking about the same distance and he's coasting a much shorter distance than me, which essentially means that green bit means he's getting back on the gas much, much faster than I am. So let's have a look at some of the other um, sections that we can see. Uh, if we go back to the actual data trails, so we've got brake force selected. Uh, the blue highlighted area is that section on the track that we've been looking at. And we'll look at it in some, some more detail by zooming in. And you can see pretty much, um, as far as the braking is concerned, going into that section of the corner, I'm braking harder than him and for slightly longer, whereas he's braking and then starting to release that brake pressure, pressure almost immediately. So he's actually braking less than me and he's braking um, for less time than me. So his, you can see there, is tailing off very quickly apart from a little blip. Now, when you look at the throttle, you can see that for some reason, uh, the, the blue pattern shows that I still have probably about maybe 20% gas going through that braking phase. So I've left my, uh, my um, gas pedal down 20% rather than his, where he's taken his foot completely off the gas, which is what you'd expect in a corner where you wanted 100% braking efficiency. So that, in, on its own, could explain for part of the reason why he's taking this section uh, 0.4 of a second faster than me. Also, when you look at this second phase, you can see that he's actually braking in red longer than I'm braking. So I've, I'm braking the same amount as him, so the height of the little um, graph is the same, which is the amount that we're braking, but the width shows that he's braking for me longer. So he's braking at the same point, because the graphs start at the same point, but he's braking for a longer period. And also he's taking his foot off the throttle completely, and yet again I've got my foot on the throttle by about 10%. So you'll see there that on the throttle panel, he's getting back to 100% throttle far, far earlier than me, which is probably generating most of the gain that he's getting from that section of the track. So just in this little small isolated part of the track, now we look at minimum speeds and you can see that his minimum speed was 47 miles per hour and mine was 43 and his maximum speed was 62 miles an hour and mine was 61 and a half. So he's actually going through that section slightly faster but 
the most important thing is that somehow I'm losing around about four to five miles an hour in that um, braking phase. So I'm braking too much and for too long. Okay, so we've now been back on the track. I've run another 10 laps purely thinking about what we've just learned in high speed. So just really concentrating in that uh, section of the track to learn from our mistakes. So heading down the start finish straight to, um, to start our fastest lap of that session, breaking at the three cones in a straight line, using the light colored strip being tight on that corner to make the corner as tight and as short as we possibly can. Again, hugging the inside line, looking for that extra piece of track on the right hand side, thinking about being very smooth, braking slightly early, getting on the gas before the apex, staying within the track boundaries this time, heading over towards the left hand side of the track, lifting slightly to turn the front of the car in, braking in the middle of the track in a straight line, no gas on the um, gas pedal this time, wide entry in and trying to get on the gas earlier, so slightly earlier there but still improvements that can be made. Hugging the right hand side, making this left hand corner as wide as we can. Taking as much out we can out of this corner, hugging in on the right hand side. Keeping the acceleration flat all the way through this section. Thinking now about braking slightly early for the last corner and getting on the gas early. So early and gas. Really nice and early for that gas, probably saved us maybe point 0.1 alone just on that particular corner and then heading over the start finish straight to complete the lap. Now let's look at it in a slightly different angle just so that you can appreciate the um, the line that we take that we've taken slightly easier and I'll also slow it down through the corners just so that you can uh, pay a little bit more attention to uh, to what we've done. So coming up to this first breaking point again as we discussed in episode 3 using your consistency uh, training you should be braking within about a wheel's width each time you come to that particular corner. Braking hard and steering wheel perfectly straight so that we maximise the effect of the brakes. Starting to turn in for the corner. Very gentle gradual turn so that we don't upset the balance of the car. Nicely on the light coloured grippier surface that we see in the middle of the track. Now heading in towards the apex and bang already on the apex already on the gas rather before the apex so we're powering in front of it and through the apex touch the apex slightly which is why we jumped a little on the exit so again there's, there's scope for improvement there hugging the right hand side using that extra um, bit of track and again very gentle here so gentle with the wheel not doing too much with the brake too quickly not releasing the gas too quickly and not getting back on the gas so, but again, we're on the gas before the apex because we know that we've got a reasonably straight, long um, section of track coming up from here. And just managing to stay on the track there. So this was a, a clean um, sort of qualifying type lap. Bit of opportunity um, just in that section there to have gone further out towards the right. Climbed the curb to help turn the car around the, uh, the corner, putting me pretty much in the middle and this time dropping my foot completely off the gas so as we can reduce the braking length turning in and as we turn in respecting the fact that as we turn the tyre hasn't got as much grip so getting off the gas so that we can use all of the tyres um, grip for the turn back on pretty much at the apex and we've got two of those tyres on the grippier surface to get a faster launch should be aiming for far out on the left hand side here so again scope for improvement there we could have gone further out which would have given us a faster entry into here and looking for back on the gas at the apex which we do still think that there's an opportunity there to break slightly earlier and get on the gas earlier and again the aim through this whole section now is to stay flat on the gas and if your tires aren't overheated and your line is perfect, you should be able to make through this whole complex without um, lifting your foot. Now you'll see I get probably about maybe three quarters of the way around here and and from a form point of view or from a speed point of view I would have been better lifting here than realizing too late 
that the uh, car wasn't far enough to the left at this point here and having to lift to make this corner that we're coming up to now. But again, we're full gas just before the apex, so it's not um, it's not the end of the world. Car still nicely balanced, although you can see the way that it's moving around. It's right on the edge of its grip, so we use the full exit that we possibly can. And now we start thinking about getting under the bridge. So we want to be far over to the left. So hugging that little white line on the left, braking early in a straight line turning and coming off the brake so that we can have 100% grip for the corner and then bang way before the apex there we're on the gas which means that coming down this start finish straight we're going to get a real nice boost of speed and then finally as we've talked about before using that full um, piece of extra track on the uh, on the left hand side for the exit just to make sure that we get the fastest possible exit we can from that corner. So we're coming down towards the start finish straight and we should be getting a time of 1 minute 24.606. So that's it for episode 4 of iRacing Faster. Hopefully you've found this brief look at the iSpeed software useful. Um, I must admit it's something that I have come to rely on because it pretty much means that you can target in a very focused way on individual corners where you would best be spending your time changing your line or your braking distance or even the gear that you're using to go through that particular corner and thanks to you know the the fantastic community of racers that we have that share their uh, lap times on uh, on high speed it really does allow you to become as good as the very best racers out there to allow you to produce laps that you just didn't think were uh, were physically possible so thanks very much for your time please if um, you enjoy the series subscribe to my youtube channel and if you'd like to uh, let us know either how much you're enjoying it or if you have a few ideas as to how we could um, make it even better then please stick a comment in the um, youtube section and um, and i'll make sure that it's read and if at all possible we'll take your views on board thanks again and see you next time